All right, welcome everybody. This is our uh, latest uh, edition in the immunohistochemistry series, and today we're going to talk about INI1. I am delighted to have our brilliant resident, Aaron Novotny, who is both a, an enthusiastic learner and an enthusiastic <laughs> teacher, and he volunteered to do uh, this talk on INI1, and I was delighted to have him do it. So welcome, Aaron. Take it away. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Mukhopadhyay. I wanted to talk with everybody a little bit about I and I want, it's a relatively new and somewhat confusing entity. Hopefully I can give you a quick introduction to the, to the stain. As with all things in pathology, it has to have an unnecessarily long and confusing name. Mm -hmm. And I and I one is a, the same as SMARC B1 and they both have their own acronyms. I and I one being integrase and interactor one and uh, SMARC B1 having a more complex acronym that actually features an acronym within an acronym. So it's acronym inception. And I'm not, I'm gonna choose not to read it all to you because oh, it boy. would be painful. Yeah, this is so long. And it, it has, so the SWI SNF is integrated within yes. <laughs> SMARC. Yes. It makes it really hard. So, so let's hear you say it three times faster. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna pass on that, but... Uh, all right, so this is it's a nuclear stain, and that's really the main yes. main take home message, right? So it, it should be a nuclear stain, and the other take home message being that smart B1 is exactly the same thing as I. That's correct. All right, now here we have a shot of normal kidney, and what I'm hoping to convey here is that I and I1 is expressed in all cells of the body. We can see it expressed in the renal epithelium, in the mesen, in the mesenchyme and uh, the lymphoid population, everything's coming through here on this stain. Yeah, so basically there shouldn't be any normal cell that doesn't express INI1. So that really means that in most cases, everything on the slide should be INI1 positive in a nuclear Yes. Fashion. Okay. And launching into the real reason we are all here, the tumors, starting with malignant rhabdoid tumor. It's a pediatric tumor and it, as we'll see in a lot of these tumors today, it tends to present at high stage and has a very poor prognosis. And we've included some pictures with these nice, simple red circles, giving you a quick idea of where the distribution of these tumors are here, yeah. kidney. That's a great idea. So we know, you know, as we move from site to site, um, our listeners will know what we're talking about. All right. So malignant rhabdoid tumor at low power will be somewhat circumscribed, but not necessarily encapsulated with foci of hemorrhage and necrosis. And we can see at the closer magnification or sheets of high grade ovoid cells that can be loosely cohesive at times with prominent eosinophilic nucleoli and vesicular chromatin. And, and basically everything is, is lost on the immunohistochemical mm -hmm. stain, right? The, all the tumor cells are negative. Yes. And, and maybe there's an occasional weakly staining lymphocyte or some normal cell in there, but virtually everything else is negative for uh, INI1. So let's move to our next tumor, which is? Another pediatric tumor, this time of the central nervous system, a typical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. It's pretty rare and again has a very poor prognosis and is almost always intracranial, but there are rare reports of it occurring in the spinal cord as well. Okay, so another pediatric tumor, poor prognosis, and what does the histology look like? It, it has some similar features to what we have seen previously, some pale to rhabdoid cells and the architecture can give you a lot of different looks. We see sheets here, but can also give you glands and rosettes, which can confuse the diagnosis and some other uh, CNS tumors. Okay, and again, we, we have complete INI1 loss in the tumor. There's one positive cell, which is probably a normal cell, right at the bottom of the immunohistochemistry mm -hmm. picture, which gives us uh, some sort of a positive internal control. INI1 SMARC B1 deficient sinonasal carcinoma goes by a variety of different names. You'll, you'll hear it described occasionally as basaloid, or, uh, but it's an adult nasopharyngeal tumor, usually happening in the nasoethmoid region, slight male predilection. 
Yeah, and this is a recently described yes. entity. Yes. And in fact, when I was training, n none of these, um, and, and that was back in 1999, I don't think any of this was known at that time. And so so everything that's known to be INI1 deficient is relatively is a relatively recent uh, discovery. So And, and it's very, very mm -hmm. helpful diagnostically. And what does the smart B1 deficient sinonasal carcinoma look like? It looks similar to what we've we've been seeing. So basaloid to rhabdoid cells with prominent nuclei, eccentric nuclei. Uh, the patterns of invasion, it can give us a few more than we've been seeing. It can give you nests, lobules, glands, we're seeing here sheets, and even cords. And the, there's a nice sprinkling of lymphocytes, which we can see on the INI1. It's important to keep in mind that the lymphocytes don't necessarily mean that it's not the tumor that you think it might be. And uh, they just serve as a nice positive internal control. Yeah, for sure. I think now what, what's emerging from, from the tumors that you've shown us so far is that this rhabdoid morphology with the pink cytoplasm mm -hmm. and this you know uh, overall rhabdoid appearance might actually be a histologic tip off that you're dealing with a INI1 deficient uh, lesion. Yes. All right, so let's move to our next tumor. So epithelioid sarcoma is a soft tissue tumor of young adults. It tends to happen in the extremities classically on the forearm. And while a lot of the other tumors that we have discussed today are uniformly aggressive, this one may or may not be that aggressive depending on a variety of factors that are kind of beyond the scope of this intro to I and I1 video. Okay, so this would fall into soft tissue pathology, yes. uh, that, that realm. And let's look at the histology for this tumor. This lesion tends to be multinodular with a fairly well circumscribed border centered in the deep dermis or subcutaneous tissue. And what we can see in this shot here is a small to moderate epithelioid cell population with eosinophilic cytoplasm, occasional collagen bundles sprinkled throughout. Yeah, and you can see, I think in the old days, we used to be taught that this is a sarcoma that can be mistaken for granulomatous uh, inflammation. Mm. It almost has that look, or mm. can be mistaken for a true epithelioid lesion like a carcinoma. And the INI1 story is, again, relatively uh, recent that, that these tumors fall within the INI1 deficient family. Again, nice internal control. And that brings us to renal medullary carcinoma. Our last tumor we'll be going over today, another renal, but this one happens to be slightly older, older population than we saw in malignant rhabdoid. Young adults, it has an interesting association with sickle cell traits, so it's classically in, in black males and again has a poor prognosis. Okay, we look at the histology next. It has a infiltrative edge with a variety of architectural patterns, solid, reticular, tubular, but there is an intratumoral inflammatory infiltrate that is classically neutrophilic. And if you look closely, you might be able to find some of those sickled cells that we were talking about earlier. Okay. And I, I see, you know, from the uh, immunostochemical picture, um, I can see that there might be a pitfall um, with INI1 interpretation, if you had a very heavy inflammatory mm -hmm. infiltrate in a tumor, it might look like it's retained, Absolutely. but if you look at the tumor cells in between, you might find that they are actually negative. So that's probably important to point out here, is when you're interpreting an INI1, make sure that you are looking at tumor, not not in uh, just at tumor infiltrating inflammatory cells for Absolutely. interpretation. All right, great, Aaron. So this was renal medullary carcinoma. Mm -hmm. And then we go to this uh, excellent table. So can you explain to us what this is about? So I don't want to tell you all of the, uh, I don't necessarily have time to go over every single INI1 deficient tumor. And there's a spectrum. There are some tumors that have complete loss. There are some tumors that have mosaic expression. There are some that are just slightly reduced. So I just wanted to introduce you to some of the classic ones that you are likely to encounter and, and then give you a, a little diagram that more completely fills in the picture. Yeah, so th this is a this is a really a nice table to have when you're thinking of this group of you know this group of uh, lesions, INI1 deficient lesions, and we'll give a shout out to this paper that you've cited mm -hmm. on the top left, 
which uh, is really an excellent paper. I was reading it this morning by Kohashi and Oda, and they're from Fukuoka, Japan. And this uh, paper appeared in Cancer Science. It's really a wonderful paper if you want to read more in depth about what INI1 is and about INI1 deficient tumor. So thank you, Aaron, for putting this in. And that will bring us to our take home points. Take home points, INI1, also known as SMARC B1, expressed in all cells, epithelium, mesenchyme, lymphoid cells. And loss is characteristic of, of a few tumors and we describe we're, we're careful with our words when we say loss because we don't necessarily want to say positive or negative as this could lead to confusion about positive for staining or positive for pathology so we try and stick to loss or retention of i and i1 and a special thanks to my chief resident dr josephine dermawan for helping me find a lot of these cases today okay this is a great presentation Thank you very much, Aaron, for, for doing this. And um, sure yeah, I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot. And hopefully I can have you convince you to do more of these uh, in the future. Thanks so, for having me. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.